Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today, I have a thrift flip video for you all. That's right, I'm finally gonna flip some thrifted things just for you guys. I, a few of you have been asking and the internet does seem to be obsessed with this style of video uh, if YouTube is anything to go by. And the, the, the things I've sort of learned from trying to look at other thrift flip videos are, uh, one, teenagers are obsessed with this somebody named uh, Brandy Melville. I don't know who or what that is, but the youth are all about it. Uh, that and Urban Outfitters, for some reason you can apparently find that at the thrift store and that seems to be the number one style of this video is looking for Brandy Melville. I don't know who she is, but I hope they find her. The second thing I've learned while looking into this style of video is that any high schooler with an access to a goodwill can get millions of views on YouTube if they can find like an Adidas sweatshirt. And for them I say, good for you. Uh, I'm surprised and a little bit confused, but I'm happy for you. Uh, to be honest, uh, I, I don't really get it, but I'm happy for you. And and three, it, there it seems to be only a few types of thrift flipping. Um, one being you know cropping sweaters, uh, two being cropping mom jeans, um, and a third being you know not knowing how to sew. Which fair, not everyone knows how to sew, uh, but that won't be the genre of video today. We do here on this channel, we do know how to sew. Uh, it doesn't mean that I won't. Uh, cut corners and be a little bit lazy in today's video though because you know the thing about fixing things it just doesn't inspire a lot of like couture finish mood in me uh, I don't feel like when I'm already fixing something and like sort of re I don't know redoing something as opposed to making it from scratch I feel less inclined to be perfect about it I also do just sort of feel like if you're going to buy a dress that is maybe you know 12 times your size and use it for fabric, basically, you might as well just buy fabric. Um, but I guess the, the recycling component gets put in there, which is good. It's always good to recycle. It's true. Recycle and reuse is very good. It's very 1940s as well. Uh, if you want to be vintage accurate, reusing old garments and making new ones out of them is actually extremely World War II era specifically accurate. Um, so it's a very accurate thing to do for vintage sewing. It's just not my favorite thing to do. So you'll notice I haven't thrift flipped before and that's just because I, I like to either sew or, or to shop. I don't really like to shop for projects. I, I kind of either want to shop and then hang things straight in my closet or I want to sew things and like make it a full-on thing. I don't really like the in-between of having to fix things or deal with someone else's design decisions that are not mine that I have to work around and there's just a lot of seam ripping involved in these activities in, in, in flipping as it were and seam ripping to me is like seam ripping equals I must have made a mistake in my mind the only time I'm seam ripping is when I've screwed something up and it's like a deadline and it takes me back to flashbacks to university days of sewing at 2 a.m. trying to get a project done and like screwing it up. So I don't know, I have a bad association with seam ripping. It me to me it means I've done something wrong as opposed to that I'm about to flip something. So it's just too much seam ripping uh, in my opinion. But we have lots of that today for these three projects and I, I knew if I was going to do any flipping I had to do it with you. So here we are. For our first flip we have this dress here that you guys may remember if you've been around here on the channel for a while. I thrifted this dress a little a while back and I included it in one of my thrift hauls. I showed you how I thought I could make it look much more 40s because this is a very 40s style dress even though it is a 1980s rayon dress but because it is this nice rayon because it had a lot of hallmarks of 1940s dresses as well I knew I could make it look more further back in vintage um, but the sleeve length on this dress was just a little too long um, or too short. It was like neither full length sleeve nor three quarter. It was just kind of an awkward length on me. So I knew that I would prefer to shorten these sleeves. So that was the first flip uh, I have here in this video today. It was just simply shortening these sleeves. And to do that, all I did was measure the length of the sleeve on a dress that I do like. Um, it was like around nine inches, I think. So I just measured down on the um, this polka dot dress, cut the sleeves off with a little bit of extra, of course, so that I could hem them. Then because this dress was from the 1980s, it had serged seams on the insides. Um, so I felt free to serge my raw edges as well because the rest of the dress was finished in that way. So I just went ahead and jumped on my serger, serged the raw edges of these sleeves, turned them up. I just eyeballed this. Um, you can use a hem gauge if you'd like or a ruler as well to make sure you are going evenly all around. But for me, I've eyeballed things like this so often that I have no trouble doing a little eyeballed hem like this. So I just ironed that hem in, pinned it a little bit, and then I did just hand stitch this hem down um, using like a long and a tiny stitch. My hand uh, sewing terminology, names versus stitches. 
they're all kind of just floating around here. I don't really know what hand stitches are called, um, but you all will tell me in the comments because this is the internet and it's unavoidable. Um, but I just do where you do longer stitches on the back and then little tiny pricks on the front. Um, so I just went all the way around the sleeves, finished hemming those, ironed, ironed it again, give it a good steam little press here and then then I was done. Um, so this was a really easy little upgrade for this dress or uh, you know, little redo. It looks pretty much the same. It just has a little, it looks a little bit less overwhelming I think with a shorter sleeve which is really what I was after because with a strong shoulder and a lot of polka dots it just had I think too much going on with a long sleeve as well so I'm happy to have the sleeve shorter and I think I'll get more use out of it now. For my second flip today I'm realizing these are all 1980s items that I'm going to be making look a little bit more 40s. Um, this second one is a dress that I also thrifted and showed in one of my thrift hauls before. This dress I feel like is so close to working for me the bodice just was a little bit too long or just isn't the best cut for me. Um, so I knew, but I loved the print of this. Um, it's, at first I thought it was polyester, but it turns out it's actually rayon. So that was a mistake on my part. I just, it felt so slippery and so slick that I just didn't even feel like rayon to me. But when I went to go and wash this dress, it said dry clean only. And I was like, why? Um, there's actually no materials tag inside this garment, which is strange for a like, um, I don't know, ready to wear garment to not have the material listed inside. I think it might have even have been, you know, it's legal requirement to put that in there, at least it is now. So interesting that this dress did not have that, um, but I went ahead and washed it anyway and it did just fine. And I did do a burn test on a little piece of the fabric from a section where I could cut a piece of whey. And it did seem to react like a rayon wood and smelled like burnt paper, which is what rayon is supposed to smell like when you do a burn test like this. Um, if you have excess fabric in a garment that can be cut away and you can do a burn test like this if you want to know what something is just definitively um this is one way to do that is just to look up you can find charts on the internet that show like what each fabric is supposed to smell and burn like um what kind of ash it makes um so usually you just know that if it's a polyester or thermoplastic fiber it when you try and um do a burn test instead of turning into ash the fabric just like melts and then you know it's made of plastic, obviously. So that did not happen with this one. So it must be rayon, which is a nice surprise because I, for some reason in my head, had logged this dress as polyester, but it's rayon, which is nice. But basically what I wanted to do is just take the skirt off of this dress and use the skirt. So I went ahead and I cut the skirt off of the dress and then I had to do kind of a lot of fiddling to get this the way I wanted it because the dress originally had um, a button front opening and the, so the skirt opened a little bit in the front and I was switching it around to use that open area as the back of the skirt and to put a zipper in to the skirt as well. So I kind of made this a much more finished skirt than it originally was when it was part of the dress. So I took the skirt off. I actually, because it was a elastic waist inside the dress to begin with, it was a little bit too big for me um, because while it fit when the elastic was in there because it cinched down to 30 inches, which is my waist size without the elastic in there, it was no longer cinched. So it was a bit too big. So I was able to cut a panel out of the back where I was gonna be putting the zipper anyway. So I cut a panel out of the back to use that extra fabric to make a waistband. So that's what I did with this. I actually did um, stabilize that waistband with some interfacing and then I put in a piece of twill tape as well just to make that really sturdy so it wouldn't stretch out for that waistband. So I cut the skirt down to like 31 inches, 30, a little 30 with some change that it would fit me and fit my waist. And I did actually finish the raw back edges with some rayon seam binding as opposed to serging on this one just because the fabric was a little nicer. I wanted to give it a little bit of a nicer seam finish. So I did finish these edges with a little bit of hug snug rayon seam binding. I will put a link to this stuff in the description below because it's one of my favorite ways to finish seams. And I can actually put a card up to my seam finishes video as well. So you can see how I use this stuff and a uh, more detailed explanation of how you can use it as well. But I just finished the back seam, sewed it back together, put that zipper in there, always fun. Uh, I would put more of this footage of me putting the zipper in here, but I, I did kind of have a time. And the way I feel about zippers is sort of, um, well, to use a Lord of the Rings quote, go and die in which you know way seems best to you or whatever the quote is, because you know there are many, many ways to do a zipper and everyone has their preferred method. For me, it's just like, how am I gonna make it through this battle without too much blood, literally. So, you know, is this the best way to do a zipper? No, my friend, um, but it was the way that I did this zipper. And you know, I lived, the skirt lived, we're all here to tell about it. So yeah, I, I would love to take a whole class on zippers where it was just like a two day, eight hours a day, couture zipper class, but I haven't found that class yet. If you know of one, let me know. But once I got the zipper in, of course, this dress already had um, the hem finish, so that was nice. I did kind of like fix this hem nicely as well. Um, you'll see on the next project, I didn't 
do this, but I kind of took, undid the hem at the new center back seam and then made the hem nice again. So it was all, all pretty on the inside, which, you know, I was taking my time with this one for some reason with the binding and the zippering and all the things. Um, and then I did just attach the waistband, of course, add a little tab in the back to do a skirt hook and just finished um, the waistband by hand stitching. Um, basically the way I do waistbands usually is I will sew the waistband onto the skirt or the skirt onto the waistband at the machine. And then I will just fold over the back side of the waistband and then hand stitch that down. That's just something that's always worked for me. And that is what I did with this skirt as well. Um, and then this one was done. I may actually end up taking the top part of this dress and try and fiddle with it a little bit to make it a working blouse that I can then pair with a skirt to look like a dress, but that just fits me better in the future. But for now, I'm just leaving it to the side because I don't want to fuss with it right now just because working with slippery rayon is just not my favorite and we have more projects to dive into. So it's on the back burner for, burner for now, but I may get back to the top of this dress sometime. So I'm leaving it here in the sewing room in my cluttered, messy sewing room for next time. Then lastly for today, I have this other 80s dress that I found. This one is in 100% cotton, and I just really love the bright colors and the print, but I didn't love, again, the way the bodice fit on me. It was close to fitting. It's just like almost, that's the thing about, think when I decide, when I agree to do a thrift flip in my brain, it's because something is already quite close to something I would really like. Um, so this was very close to being a dress I would like, and I just really liked the print and there was pockets. Um, so I wanted to give this a shot and I knew I could at the very least make a skirt out of this dress because it is quite easy to just cut the bodices off of dresses and then make them into skirts, as you can see, because this is the second one of this video that I'm doing. So what I did here, again, I cut the skirt off uh, and the bodice separate, I cut them apart. And then again, because this was an elastic waistband on the inside, um, I, wanted to maintain the gathering that was there but once i took the elastic off it was 37 inches long or like wide the waist was and i needed to be down again at like 30 31 which is my waist size so i did cut again a big panel out of the back because it was gathered this was a quite wide panel that i cut out which was good because i ended up using that fabric later um, i was able to cut a waistband out of that panel again to make a waistband for this skirt i should have cut this a little bit wider uh because the waistband came out a little bit thin just due to um, the way I sewed it up, but it's okay. I don't mind having a little bit of a thinner waistband. It's fine. Um, but I basically just reused the zipper that was already part of this dress. And I just, after I taken that panel out, resurged the back seams, um, sewed that back center back seam back together again. Um, and you can see somewhere in here, I'll hopefully I have footage where you can see how I didn't do what I did on the last hem to this one. I just go went ahead and sewed it because I, it's cotton and it's just like a simple summer project. I'm not going to make it too couture finished again, um, especially when I'm doing these flips. It just turns me into a lazy seamstress, I swear. Um, but then I had this one back together. I put the zipper back in. I did just do it uh, railroad style like the original zipper on this garment was. And I used, I reused that original zipper from this garment as well, um, which is something you can do. Just make sure you don't pull the pull off the end of that zipper until the ends are somehow secured. You'll see in some of these clips, I have washi tape around the edges of it because I don't want that zipper pull to come all the way off because I'm not sure if I can get it back on, but that's just how I go about reusing zippers in a garment like this. But I got everything back together, made my waistband, used some interfacing on that as well. Because I had kept the original gathering and like stitching in this skirt i just interfaced this and i didn't add a twill tape to this waistband just because i felt like it wasn't going to stretch because it was already quite bulky from leaving the part of the bodice that was attached like where i cut it off there was many layers at the waist so i didn't feel it needed an additional twill tape as well it was going to be thick enough so i just went ahead and made a waistband for this one and then i finished it the same way i did for the other skirt where i just turn that folded finished part onto the other side and then just stitch um, hand stitched that to finish it and added a skirt hook again to this one. And then it was time for like the iffiest part of these thrift flipping adventures. And that was trying to make a bolero to match the skirt 
out of the rest of this dress. Now the biggest problem in doing so was that this dress had an asymmetric front in the beginning. So because of that asymmetric front, when I took that seam apart, one side I had like, you know, plenty of fabric and the other side I did have a very strange shape. Um, if I just had, you know, if it met in the middle, I could have just cut it into a bolero straight away, but I had to basically piece together the other, the missing side before I could make it into a bolero. So this dress originally had a center back um, zipper. So I just sewed, I cut off the zipper from the back of this bodice and then just sewed a seam down the center back, which actually ended up fitting quite well on the back. So that's nice. I wasn't going to do anything with the sleeves other than remove the huge shoulder pads that were in there because it did also have interfacing in the sleeve puff to hold up the puff. It had puff sleeves with interfacing sewn into them and then a huge sleeve, um, a huge shoulder pad, which was like, man, the eighties, they were not messing around when it came to the shoulders. So I decided that we could do with just one of those things. And I left the interfacing to stiffen the sleeve, but I took the sleeve, um, the shoulder pads out of this dress because just too much shoulder. And that's me saying that I usually like a shoulder, but whew, that was above and beyond the call of duty. Um, so I took the shoulder pads out and just left the puff in there. And then for the front, I did end up piecing together that other side. I sort of just tried it on and then drew with a chalk pencil how I wanted the bolero to look. And I did actually pinch out a little dart from the front as well. So it would just fit around my bust area a little bit better just because I feel like if you have a flatter front, this works almost better, boleros do. But if you have a curvier bust, as say I do, um, sometimes you have to put darts into boleros where other people may not. So I did pinch little darts into the front of this as well. So after I had sewn and pieced everything together using fabric from the back of the skirt that I was really lucky to have to piece together the front of this, the way I did this was essentially to lay a piece of muslin or like spare fabric I had sitting around over the side of the bolero that worked um, when it comes to the bodice, one side was full because of that asymmetry. So the side that had fabric to work with, I traced the shape of the bolero I wanted onto that, cut that out. And then I traced that entire fried um, side front with this piece of fabric here. And then I used this piece of fabric as a template to create the piecing uh, fill in like puzzle piece I needed for the other side of this bolero because the dress was asymmetric. It had this piece missing over here and I had to piece it together using fabric from that panel that I had cut out of the back of the skirt. So it was lucky that was just wide enough to cut this little piece here that I needed for the other front. I don't think this would work on something like say a solid fabric. The only reason you don't notice this piecing is here really much is because of this busy pattern. So that really worked out for me basically only because of this fabric. Um, otherwise I think this really wouldn't have worked all this piecing I had to do on this other side front here. But the way I did it was to trace basically the side front onto a piece of fabric and use that as a template. I did actually piece together some uh, facings as well for this. You can see here I am drafting a little facing for each side. Um, I'm sewing that to the facing that was part of the dress. The dress was finished with the facing as well. And so I just kind of uh, finagled. <laughs> I don't really know how to say how I fixed these facings. Basically, I just extended the facings with pieces of fabric from cut from the skirt and continued the facings down the front of my new little bolero. Then for the bottom edge, I was pretty much out of this fabric at this point. So I just found some dark purple cotton bias tape that I had in my stash and just used that to finish the inside bottom edge of this bolero. A lot of the seams inside of here, I didn't bother to serge or finish in any way. And that was because I wasn't sure if this project was even going to work. So I was kind of slap dashing and hoping that it was gonna work. So I didn't even take the time to finish the seams inside, which if I were planning on wearing this on the daily and washing it all the time would be bad, but because I don't think I'll be wearing this bolero all the time, maybe a couple of times in the summer, um, if I just hand wash it, it should be fine. It shouldn't fray apart too badly just because this is a pretty okay quality cotton. But normally if I was making something from scratch, 
let's say I would serge all the raw edges or finish them with seam binding or something before I did this. But because I was like, you know, hoping that this was going to work out at all, I kind of didn't bother to serge anything. So the insides of this isn't the prettiest, but it will work. It will work. And so here is the finished transformation, the thrift flip here. This is the most, you know, epic transformation. It looks quite similar, but now instead of one piece, instead of just having a dress, I have two pieces, a bolero and a skirt. Funny enough, I don't have actually many tops to wear with this bolero skirt combo um, because I have this purple t-shirt, but I don't actually have a white shirt. And this seems to be like a navy, not a black in this print. So I don't actually have a navy t-shirt or a white t-shirt, which is just a ridiculous lapse. And so things that I really must look for next time I'm out thrifting are a white t-shirt or a navy t-shirt or like little lightweight sweaters or something um, to wear with things like this. So things to go on my shopping list there. But here is the finished look. Of course, I did keep the pockets that were in the skirt on this. Of course, if you already have pockets. You're not going to get rid of those babies. So we kept the pockets on this skirt as well. So those were my three thrift flip projects that I have to show you guys. Those are a little bit more of a vintage way of thrift flipping, I suppose, uh, compared to just cropping the old Adidas hoodie, which uh, don't get me wrong, looks great. I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock it because I too can appreciate a cropped Adidas hoodie, uh, surprisingly enough. But uh, I do things a little bit differently around here when it comes to fashion. I think we're a little bit, uh, dowdy compared to some, but uh, you know, that's how we like it here. We're an old fashioned, this is an old fashioned place, isn't it? Um, so those were my sewn thrift flip fixes that I came up with. Uh, if I find any other things out of the thrift store, I will try and keep them aside for things like this in the future. I know this style of video is highly requested, but I just don't find that many things to flip very often. So things that I like enough to be willing to suffer for them basically is how I feel about that. So if I find more things out there in the wild, then I will of course get them and set them aside to do another video like this in the future. Um, do let me know what other kinds of like thrift adjacent things you would like to see from me, thrift tips, or uh, maybe like if I take the camera with me out thrifting or maybe take a friend um, to help me film out in the store, things like that. Let me know what kind of thrifting content you are interested in other than hauls, of course, which I am always happy to do. And we'll be having another one here soon on the channel because I went recently and may have finally found some mom jeans, but I digress. Thank you all as always for tuning in today and I'll see you again soon. Bye.